Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Taylor Jones. And do you have any idea what time it is? <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Taylor Jones and welcome back to my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits. And for those that didn't watch my last episode of Cold Man's Winter, don't worry, the link will be in the description bar down below, description box, whatever you may call it. But, right now, what am I doing for today? Well, I'm here to bring you another episode of Cold Man's Winter. But what am I talking about today? Well, last week I talked about vulgarity and as a way of saying, Watch what you say. And I felt like I felt like I was doing a little bit of preaching, but I'm not a preacher. But again, shout out to my granddaddy, Charles Taylor, my minister from Front Street Church of Christ. And also a shout out to all sister congregations everywhere. Because in 2023 it's a war, a war between Satan and Christian, so we got to do a better job and get get at it right now and as my cousin Olympia Pringle would say I want more him and less of me which which I mean it from the bottom of my heart shout out to Olympia Pringle as well but what do I want to talk about for this episode of cold man's winter well if you're thinking about weaknesses that's exactly what I'm going to explain so please bear with me bear witness like please pay good attention to my story about dealing with weaknesses now when you think of weaknesses you think about a lot of things you think about name calls from bullies and even family members who don't mean a hill of bean towards you like they expect you to know things but you, you're making it hard for yourself. They gonna blame this on you and they even wanna cuss you out. They don't want to see you succeed. But that's the devil's work. But when it comes to weaknesses, you gotta remember that there is always a chance to expand your power. You gotta be strong. You got to do what you have to do to survive. And besides, just like every time I end my episodes of Cold Man's Winter on you always see a, a biblical verse that I put in the end credits, and I mean it. I got to get my Christianity in order. I got to put myself in check, even when it means to read my Bible, which I got to work on that. I really do. I'm not going to lie about myself. I got to be serious, and that's what I've been doing for a while. So, when it came, comes to weaknesses, I can tell you a story about a guy named Lenny. Lenny, who is he? It's fictional, like all of my stories are, even when I put all of my family members and everybody that I know, like tell a story like how they gonna turn from weak to strong. Leonard, born as Leonard, I mean, Lenny, born as Leonard Mon, no, I was about to say Malone, yeah. Leonard Malone, he was a 16 year old high school kid and he was the first born and only son of his family. His father was a diehard country fan and he really enjoyed his life as a Christian and he also became like a mentor to all of Lenny's friends for guidance, for confidence and his mother, she was more like, she was more like of a Karen, I mean she like <laughs> That don't matter. I mean, who cares? Lenny, Lenny got this. But it wasn't even like that because when he moved, to, when he and his family moved to to Hartford, Connecticut, like he was, he was 14 years old. He left another city from Connecticut because let's just say that his school was burned down by some bullies who had who had no no potential and they flunked their senior year they couldn't even graduate they have to go to summer school and they were like forget that so they decided to come together as a crew with ski mask gloves dressed in all black um, 
vinegar, uh, cooking oil, and lighters, matches, and firecrackers to set up the whole shebang bang to start like a war. I want justice. If you ain't going to graduate us, we're going to teach you a lesson. So, sophomore year, it was, it was heartbreaking for Lenny. And he told his father about this story to the fact that he had no other choice but to move to Hartford. So he moved his family to Hartford, Connecticut, to start a new life. And that way, Lenny would keep his education because Hartford was close by, by 16 miles. But dig this, after what went down, he went to Hartford High started his junior year and dig this he was the new guy he was shy about it but at the same time his father gave him some confident advice to keep your eyes on the prize keep your eyes focused on what's in front of you and even if you feel guilty about some things you gotta let somebody know you can't keep it forever so for the first year as a senior first day it was all right. It was good and dandy. I mean, he was smart. I mean, he even helped for a while with some of the classmates that he had in any subject. All the students asked for his help because they felt like they were lost. And even though some of them were females, they all looked up to him like he's, uh, he's not a ladies man. Let's just say that. But they looked up to him because he had a heart full of gold, heart of gold. He was like, he was a Christian figure like his father, but his mother on the other hand, she was like rude. And that's when all of the uh, bullies started to kick in. But it, they didn't arrive to them until November, because school started in August, but now after, after a good start, November, that's when all hell broke loose for Lenny. Lenny was caught helping one of the one of the popular girls. I mean, well, one of the girls' homework. Like he was asking for help. I mean, he, he asked for help, and Lenny wasn't wasn't mad about. It. And she, but she, she decided to do question number. Let's say that she had a 30, 30 question math assignment. Question thirty was the last one. She had twenty four math problems done by herself. And some of the questions were hard to, to communicate with, to, uh, to understand. And um, for the girl to finally figure out what the questions really meant, like how the maths, math was set up, she actually gave Lenny a kiss on the cheek. Like, thank you. Yo, yo, Stacy, what the heck you doing? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just getting help with Lenny. Man, I want you to get away from him. It's personal business. But get out of here now. Look here, new boy. I don't know what the heck you going, you going through and what you trying to do, but you better know that that's my girl. And if I ever catch you with her or any one of my homeboys, girls, I'm going to kick your tail. And he was like, Okay, like he was a little scared, but like he knew, like the way he said, it, like, okay, what? You got a problem with me? You don't like the way I sound? No, it's not that. And I didn't even mention anything about your breath stinking. And all the all the classmates they looked around and Lenny like, Ooh. that's it. I'm gonna kick your tail now. So the bully had the nerve to fight Leonard. Leonard threw, threw him right by the lockers in the cafeteria. You have some nerve to talk about me? I'm going to kick you and kick your butt so hard that you wish you never came back to Hartford. And when he, so he, he was like, Lenny was like, okay. He, he was scared, but he knew that if he made one false move, he would have to be, be a fool. And all of a sudden, after the fight went, went down, 
Lanny was knocked down. A couple bruises. Uh, his his lip was a little busted because he got punched. A black eye and all that mess. It's like, dude. And it's just stupid. And everybody was was fearing for the cool kids. So Lenny, he actually made acquaintances with new bullies. Hartford High starting to go downhill in November, but the far the journey was far from over. The madness was far from over. Just like that, he came home with with a bloody bloody lip, black eye, and bruises. Knowing that he was not pleased, his father wasn't at home. He was at his job, and his mother. What happened to you? I got into a fight, all because because of some some random idiot is mad over his girl. Well, what what she do? Did she kiss you? That's on the cheek, and that's it. And we were only doing homework. Well, let me tell you something, Leonard. I don't care how nice you are, but that attitude, that move that you're trying to pull is not going to work. And if I were you, I would get up, get up in there in the bathroom, clean up yourself, and think about what you did. Because I'm going to tell your father about this when he gets home. That's fine with me. I was going to tell him, tell him first and foremost, hey, don't you back sass me. I'm, I'm the mother. The father is gone, so you do what I say. Otherwise, I will hurt you so much like them bullies to teach you a lesson. Okay, so now the mother has gone way too far. Now remember, she had a caring attitude. She was like a diva. And I wonder, how did that junior year go for, how, how well did the junior year go for Leonard? Now Lenny, he was full of it, full of pain. That is, he can't help anybody else do homework, and everybody's like, Leonard, what's the deal, man? Why are you so afraid of these guys? Well, why? Oh yeah, well, why are you afraid? Look, man, you don't want to deal with them bullies. I'm telling you, man. I mean, if you ain't gonna help us succeed and pass our grades, how are we going to survive? How are we going to make it through another school year? You're like the tutor, and we can't let you give it up. So one student told him straight up, well, you cannot give this up. You've got to know when to stop this madness. Even if I stop this madness, what good is that going to bring? I'm the new guy, remember? I expected to do a good job because the last time if I recall the bullies from my old school they burned down the school because they didn't graduate well that's on them what else do I need to hear and when the guy heard Lenny talk about his past and like how far this pain has been going ever since sophomore year came to an end it was like Dude, I just I heard about it on the news. Oh, man. So the guy who was concerned about Leonard, he, he went to the bathroom and prayed, prayed for Leonard to uh, overcome his fears, his weakness, and also bless the bullies that, that started an arson. But dig this, before, the, before December came to an end, the individuals responsible for burning Lenny's old school, they all were tried, they were all apprehended, like arrested, they were all tried because they were like adult related, like 18. And they have to do, they have to be in a juvenile committee for for 18 months and also they would have to, to go back to school 
after their time is up with with extra extra guidance like everybody's watching them before they make another bad decision and I remember yeah but um for for a tough for a tough beginning of Hartford High School, Mr. Malone, Leonard's father, he came home one day and he was crying, looking at a picture of his mom. And Leonard stopped by to comfort him. Oh man, how I miss you so much. Grandma was, grandma was crazy about you, wasn't she? Well, honestly, she was strict as well. Yeah, Leonard was very, very heartbroken to hear his father break down. And when his father broke down, he knew that um, some things didn't add up because his father, Lenny's father, told him based on the issues that he'd been through before Lenny. He even told him about the time when his mother forced him to fall in love with Lenny's wife. I mean, no, no, Lenny's mom. She was very strict at no buts, no ifs, ands, no buts about it. I made I make the rules around here. Your father's already deceased. What good is he gonna do? Nothing good. It's kind of like the same thing that happened for Lenny's wife. No, no, like Leonard's mom. I'm sorry. Leonard's mom. She had the same attitude as Mr. Malone's mother. all over love. I mean, she even put the Bible in this, as in, honor your mother and father, which is the number one commandment that everybody needs to follow. But dang it, she took that commandment very seriously. It's like, he didn't know how to speak out. And not to mention, one day she even who caught him, caught him playing Tom Jones's What Snoop Pussycat? Whoa, 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 turn that off. What's wrong, Mom? That song is a curse. A curse? Why? It doesn't make sense. I, oh, I do know why. That song, if you ever think about that song, that'll be like a curse. Why is, why is it a curse? Like, what's going on? When she said that, it's kind of like based on the fact that she was detailing that the word pussycat is like an offense. It will, it will compare to how weak you are. But that's exactly the problem. Mr. Malone was the pussycat that, that was mentioned in the song, but his mother said it in the worst way, like an offensive way, like negative way as an insult. So she's saying that if he listens to it and sings along, then he's insulting his, himself. And that was just weird. And even if you have your first child, you better not let him play. And all of a sudden, it's like a nightmare that he couldn't let go. But then, back to reality. Lenny, he actually heard the song. He actually heard that song by Tom Jones. He felt like, at first when he heard it, it was kind of like, wait a minute, why does it sound like an old opera song? But it wasn't, it wasn't an opera song. It just, it just stood out. Like, when you're dancing, it's like dancing in a three step, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Like dancing in a triangle. 
He even tried to play that song in piano, and he got better and better at it. But one, but when he did that, well, I wouldn't play that if I were you. What's wrong, Dad? Your grandmother said this is a cursed song. If you play that song, sing that song, you'll 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 be what you what the title of the song is. Wait a minute. Why? I just don't understand. Trust me, you don't want to do that. But let's just say that Leonard didn't know at first. But since he went to the um to the uh music room in high school, Hartford High, he played that song. But this was like during his break. After lunch, after he eat his lunch, like he eats his lunch for 15 minutes, he has a, a sack, I mean, a, a bag full of lunches that he made for himself. His mother won't provide for him. His father, he expects better. And he was always busy. Like, for the tutor, I mean, for the tutor that he was, like a helper, he stayed away from all the individuals like the, the bullies the girls they were fed up with him but this was back in february black history Month, and the, the so-called talent show was in april april was when the talent show was about to take place but he still had to help out some folks i thought i told you about helping everybody out but but that's not your girl I don't care. I'm still in charge. You know what? Fine. If you want to kick my butt, so be it. Let the whole world see it. Heck, let the whole whole faculty see this. See it to believe it. Go ahead. Throw me by the lockers. Punch me. Give me another black eye. Bust my lip again. I mean, Lenny was starting to be overwhelmed and confident at the same time but he still lost the fight he still got jumped but then again his, one of his girls tried to help back the heck up no one helps this fool get going like everybody had to mind him and the guy who prayed for him like dang it dang it Lenny I told you he wanted to say that, but if he said that, he would have would hurt his own own heart. He'd be like, who the heck am I to judge? See, that's the thing. Nobody was pleased. Some some individuals like that's that's terrifying, man. That's pitiful, man. If if when you talking noise about Lenny. Who's more pitiful? You guys are. But Lenny did not let it slide. He did not let it slide on a bad note. He just got up, cleaned up his bruises, went to the music room, and played the piano. But even though it's kind of like he disrespected the warning, like, why is it, why is it a problem so he played the piano, he played What's New Pussycat, and just sang along with it. And all of a sudden, the bullies girls, they spotted him. <gasps> I didn't know he can play piano. So they walked in and they sung along with him. And yes, some of the band members, the marching band, they played, played along with him. And they like had like a little performance of a lifetime. The, and, the, and the girls, they actually stomped and they sang along to keep them on tune, keep them on tempo. And that was like amazing. And everybody was so pleased to hear, hear Lenny after getting his butt kicked and he got better and better. So he, he practiced that song on a daily basis. But he couldn't play it at home though. And then all of a sudden, when when the beginning of April hit, 
all hell was about to break loose once again, but this time it got worse for Lenny. But at the same time, Lenny had enough. Came home from school with a smile on his face, and but his father was not pleased, his mother was not pleased. They, they were questioning him based on his loyalty. I mean, how the heck do they know about him playing What's New Pussycat? Well, his wife, well, his mom knew. Gave, gave Lenny the time to think about what the deal is. Like, why is it such a big deal? So, you, so yes, I played it at school. I've been practicing over and over. And besides, I'm doing this because I heard there's a talent show coming up. A talent show. But then all of a sudden, his father knew that there was a phone call, so Lenny had to take this. And his mother went off on, him, on Lenny like crazy. First you go on Karen mode, but now this is ridiculous. Very ridiculous the fact that Lenny had enough of his mother. Lenny was so mad at his mom. And, I don't need this crap. You're not a mom. You're, you're as worse as my dad's, dad's mama or AKA my grandmother. You're so strict. You think that song is gonna put me in shame? I'm already got bullied. I already got jumped. But now I find music as a part of a better part of me. And you're just gonna have the nerve to get get on me. And until then, she did the dumbest move. As in, well, as a mother who cared less about his firstborn son, her her firstborn son. She grounded him, and she wanted her to stop thinking about that song, stop thinking about that the competition, like the talent show, and she even wanted him to forget about his junior prom. And if Anne's no buts about it was said, <sighs> fine, he slammed the door, and then Leonard, I mean Leonard's father came in after the phone call. And the phone call was so, so busy, so strict, that kind of like, like he was no longer needed. But he didn't get fired, I mean, he's got laid off. I mean, the, the workforce was, was looking for new recruits, like, come on now, that's just unfair. I moved my family to Hartford and this is gonna happen to me, really? Yes, it happened. What good comes out of it? Nothing. And his father like, see, I mean, and now his father wanted to argue. No, forget it. If you was really my father, how come you never tell, never tell me how you overcame your fear? Why must that song be offensive? Why must it be a curse? I'm already cursed. Bullies every day. You just want me to be weak. I never raised a fist. I stood out, but I still get hit. And now I gotta be grounded and forget about this stupid song, this stupid, or well, well, not stupid, but this amazing junior prom coming up for me at the same time. Forgive me guys, the, uh, the stand is acting really funny today. And now the talent show? Have you ever stood up to your mother before she died? Have you ever? What's wrong with that song? All people do is lie. They make you feel weak. I'm tired of being weak and now I'm grounded for this stupid nonsense. And the bullies were smiling all throughout school. I mean, look at, look at us. We're in Hartford now. You want me to be a fool again? What are you, a darn fool? You used to, you, you couldn't play Tom Jones, What's New Pussycat, but you became one from your mother. I became one from the bullies and my mom. 
but you I won't accept. You're the only father figure I have. Nobody loves me. That's on y'all. For that I say, shame on you, daddy. Now get out of my room. As a matter of fact, before that, whatever happened to you? You used to play the Isley Brothers Contagious. Because I'm going to tell you, women are contagious. Your mother was. My mom is. Have you ever thought of the divorce? But when, he, when Mr. Malone went to bed, to bed that night, he slept, had nightmares, he was sweating, and bam, it just clicked. <gasps> Last time, the time he spoke to his mother, I'll think about it. I was trying to please her, like, no need to argue. But that night when he went on a date, she ended up in a car accident. An 18-wheeler hit Mr. Malone's mother. He spotted me. He was wondering. He want, tried to call her and made up his mind and said, No, I will not. I made up my mind. No. But then, it was, but it was too late because he spotted her on the news. Dead at the scene. He had to bury his mother like a week later. He was so afraid that he didn't want, want to dis disrespect his mother's wishes. But since his mother was dead, he had nowhere else to turn, nowhere else to go. But then he realized, he got up early one morning. He was right. So he went out, he got up, he played the Isley Brothers Contagious, knowing that this, that this got to end. His fear that held him back for so long has got to end. So the very next day, the girls were asking if that he was going to be in a talent show. I can't. I'm grounded. And the guy that told him, didn't I do? Haven't you been hurt enough? He want to raise his voice. He want to kick his butt. Now don't tell me you're a bully too. How long you never stood up to your bullies? What? Why does everybody think I'm a pussycat? What's new pussycat? Well, well, you want me? You want to take care of my dirty deeds? You want me to take care of my own dirty deeds? Do it yourself. I'm grounded. Who needs a mother figure? And then it's like he's questioning, I mean, he's answering the question like, who's slowing him down? His mama, his grandmother's dying words was father, and the bullies. So when the bullies came to him, I don't give a dang about them. He tried to avoid them, walk away, but then all of a sudden, he got into a fight. He, he elbowed the bully in the nose crotch kicked him, threw him in the trash can. The other bullies were like, they about to get him too. But all of a sudden, I mean, the, the guy who wanted to get mad at Lenny, enough, back up, back off. You fight him, you fight me. So he knew. So all of a sudden, the whole world, the whole class, including the girls, they had enough of this bull. The bully's bull. So they went home. I mean, they ran away. And Mr. Uh, and the guy that wants to tell Lenny, I told you so, he admitted he was afraid too. Everybody had a weakness to stand out. Everybody was pleased, and everybody else who watched it gave Lenny and uh, the friends who stood out a, a round of applause. But the journey was not over. When he got home, he sung What's New Pussycat with all his might. And his mother, the Karen mother, had enough. Enough! So she came to him and like asked him about his loyalty. Once again, well, I can, well you can totally forget it. I kicked the bully's butt today. 
And then all of a sudden, she got so amped up that this was going too far. She even, even did the Dr. Dre slap to her, him. Shut up! Like, you, if you remember the Straight Outta Compton movie, the mother slapped Dr. Dre, telling him to shut up. But then when his father came home, he, he sung in, he sung all, right on time. He came home right on time and sang Mr. Big's part. What the heck is going on between my mother and, between my wife and my son? It's like, they about to recreate that part. But, so Luke, Zolini explained to him what just went down. And not to mention, when the woman tried to try to uh, explain, shut up! Can't you see we men are talking? Bird, bird I told your butt to stop that squawking. Now I think you want to leave this place. Cause I'm, or I'm about to catch a case. So he waved the divorce papers out. His mother, I mean, Lenny's mother was not pleased, but she had to sign the divorce papers, pack her things, and like, get the heck out of here. And his father gave Leonard open arms, welcomed him back with open arms, telling him he's sorry for not trusting you and being there for you. And so, and he finally admitted that the so-called curse it was all just to test my manhood because I didn't want want to be her to be in my life. So, when the night of performing, the bullies had their their time. They performed, but when Lenny he got on the stage, some people the bullies were laughing at him, but he played the song. What's new, pussy cat? He performed, but his father joined along with him with a guitar, and the and the good girl, I mean, and the bullies' girls, they stomped, clapped, and sang background, and they had a heck of a night. Even the marching band members played, played along. And guess what? Later that night, he won the talent show fair and square, along with his father on his side. A family tradition. The curse was officially over. The so-called pussycat of weakness, it was dead and gone. He, he's no longer afraid. He, he overcame his weakness with strength, including his father. So, Leonard Lenny Malone won the talent show in junior year in Hartford High and became a big news for the uh, Hartford local news. And he went to junior prom and his father was very proud of him that he stepped up. And he's proud of himself from overcoming his fears. With all that being said, the bullies, they started to get their acts together and ask for forgiveness. And he also, Lenny, he continued to help out other individuals with their homework. That way that they would help, he would help Hartford High get better and better with grades. And it became his lifelong dream to be a helper, a mentor like his father. And his father actually became a music teacher for the high school himself. Cause he got himself a new job and they live happily ever after. No longer weak, but strong at the same time. With all that being said, thanks for listening to the, vi the story about weaknesses, how you can turn it to weakness, how you become weak, and become stronger. It depends on how, how serious you're taking your time. With all that being said, thank you for your quality time. This has been a powerful move for me, even though it's been a tough, tough journey because I still feel like I gotta overcome my weaknesses as well as you guys do. So if you like the story about how to overcome weaknesses, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
The link will be in the description bar down below. Click the notification bell and there will be more in stores. With all that being said, this is yours truly, Taylor Jones, signing out. Oh, hey guys. And before we go into further details, like before the end credits, I just want you to know that I totally forgot about about the sweet lady of the week. Like, what is the point of me doing a video of Cold Man's Winter without mentioning the sweet lady of the week? And for those that's wondering who the sweet lady of the week is, that will be none other than Miss Carissa Clark Cliff. And to Carissa Clark Cliff, if you're watching this, I somehow forgot about mentioning you earlier, but I'm trying to make it up to you, but, okay, I'm saying buts too much. No more butts, okay? But for real, seriously, on a serious matter, shout out to Carissa Clark Cliff. And this is for for the special friend that she is. And I had to give her a quick Sweet Lady of the Week shout out. But anyway, like I said before, link to the last episode is in the description bar slash box below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click the notification bell for more and, and there'll be more in stores. And now, I'm off. So thanks again for watching another episode of Cold Man's Winter. Looking forward to making another one coming your way in a few days.